Hello, brothers and sisters. We are welcome to another edition today. Today, we want to discuss about our mind. The remain, I mean, the Christian mind. That is what it means, you know, when we become a Christian. Because now the Bible was speaking in the book of um, Romans, chapter 12. You know, I want to read it. You know, what Paul was saying about our mind because you see that most people they don't take care of their mind especially when they know Jesus that is when they become born again they are still with the same mind you know they used to be when they have not yet known the Lord so that is why I want to discuss mostly about the mind today that is the mind we had when we were in the world you see what should we do with it should we not bring it to the new faith? Because that is what most people tend to do. You know, they still carry the old mind that they have, the, that they were having in the world. They bring it to Christianity. So that is the area we want to discuss today. So I go to the book of Romans chapter 12. What does it say? And I read from verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body holy, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable word. Service. And be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see it. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of what? <coughs> of God. You know? For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in our body, all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of what? Of another. Having then give the firing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let or prayer according to the proportion of faith or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, and either teach it on teaching, or either exhorted on exhortation, either give it, let him do it with simplicity, either rule it with diligence, either show it mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Yeah, Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to all, another with brotherly love, in honor prevailing one another, not slothful in business, father in spirit, serving one the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing stand in prayer, and distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be not, be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not heightens, but condescend to men of loose estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things which are honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as light in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto robbery. It is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him, if he be Thus give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coats of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with what? With good. So this is the aspect of the scripture that is speaking to us about our mind. You know, I said most of us when we were in home believer, we used to bring the mind of home believer with us. We brought this mind to Christianity. And that is why Christianity has been so difficult. That's why you see some people, you know, they say they are Christians. You know, you wonder if these people have he ever, ever even known the Lord. But really the Bible says that if you shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, you'll be saved. You know, it's by believing in the words of God. You know, we believe in our heart that we have a Father in heaven. We have Jesus. So that's what the Bible says. He said we should be saved. We shall be saved. But it's more than that. You know, I said in some video that not only to profess. You know, there are some people, they are professing Jesus, but they are not doing it. 
So this is the area we want to talk today about our mind. What is the mind? Mind is our thinking realm. Area we think, our heart. You know, what are the things that is brought up in our heart? We notice that most of us, we are brought up by earthly, I mean, Edin, Edin father. When we say Edin father, an unbelieving parent. So most of the culture they taught us, most of the culture have been culture of idols. You see, idols, they don't forgive. Hiders, they're hypocrites. Hiders, they hate one another. Hiders, worship our opportunists. You know, you know there are many things they brought from this devilish way that it became their own way of life. So that is why we are here now. We want to discuss about this thing so that this culture, this way of life, most people are still carrying along to Christianity. They even made it the baseline of their faith that. Even you will wonder, ah, why is these people behaving like this? You know, they are not controlled by the word of God. So that is why I want to see what is this idol. So we are going to go to the book of Galatians also, you know, so that we know what is the mind. When we talk of the mind, the mind means our thought frame, our heart, our flesh, you know. So when we go to the book of Galatians 5.19, let's see what it says also about this mind. You know, in other places they refer it to what? has the flesh you understand me when we talk of the flesh is still what it's still the same thing so i read from galatians 5 verse 19 you know he said now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanliness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance Emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I've always told you the in time past that they we do so time shall not inherit what? The kingdom of God. So these are the things we have as we call the flesh, or we call these are the things that our mind do. You understand? That if we have been taught, you know. When you go to the world, you see it, they sleep with one another. You know, we talk of adultery there. That's the work of the flesh. So it's not a big thing. It's not a sin. It's not a crime, you know, that kind of a thing. So that is what we are looking into in this place, you know, this work of the flesh. So people do most of these things. It's not new to them because they are used to it. You sleep with my wife, I sleep with your wife. You sleep with my husband, I sleep with your husband. Because everybody is looking for addition. Once it gives me money or pleasure. So these are the things they do in idolatry. But when people become born again, they now profess the name of Jesus. They still bring that mind to, to, to Christianity. So that's why you see in church today, you see people are still doing it. But the Bible says we have to change our mind. You know, then we have fornication. You know, you sleep with everybody. You understand? For one reason, maybe some they are doing it for commercial purpose, for money, you know, for enjoyment, for pleasure. So these are things they do when they have not yet known Christ. You know, people still bring it to. Then we have what? We have uncleanliness. We have lascivious life, lasciviousness. You see, you know, uh, like to live excess life, drunkenness, excess thing, wearing excess cloth, eating excess food. You see, we, we, we doing things in excess. You see, because you want to showcase yourself, you want to show the flesh. So this is what we do when we're home believer. This is also the Bible call it the work of the flesh. What occupied our mind? You see. So then he went on to speak of idolatry. When we talk of idolatry, you see, it's nature of man. You know, when we are in the world, we have not known Christ, we like to worship idol. When we talk of an idol, you see, it could be images. You know, some people, you see, they bow down to idols. You know, image because they believe that image is having power. You see, they add it to God. They are, in, they are Christian, but they still phone people, help me. You know, even they, 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 they even go to, to consult what? Mediums, you know, witchcraft. They can consult Habalists, what we call Bali voodoo people, you see, for help. You know, they will say they are not washing, just so need help from, from, from an idol. You know, some people, not even idol, they make human beings, they idolize human beings. You see, some people, they make human beings their idols. You see, it, you know, because that person, they see that he's rich or he has things they needed. 
you know, they'll be worshipping that person. They will not worship God. They will not talk to God about that name because that man has that thing or that woman has it. You start to worship that person. So that is also an idol. It's the work of the flesh. Then he spoke about also worshipping nation. You know, some people, you know, they do everything to remain in a nation because they are in a, a nation that is rich. Like Sodom and Gomorrah, they were so rich in those days. You know, people want to live there. So that's why you see the Sodom people. They are wicked against anybody. Why? Because they too, they are idolizing their hometown. Because it's the richest of all towns in that, in that region as of that time. So that is what people do today. You say, well, I'm not worshipping idol. But you are worshipping. You are worshipping passports. You say, hey, you want to take European passport. You want to take American passport. How did you get those things? Why? Because you have committed all lewdness, you know, to remain in that nation. You believe that if you leave that nation, you will not prosper again. And this is a Christian. So that is what we talk about idolatry. It's the work of the flesh. You can worship human being. You can worship even the system. The system of things. So this system here is better than the system in so so in Africa. You understand? Because this system here, they are giving you, giving you. You are they are not asking from you. So you want to die in that system. That is also another system of war, of idolatry. Then he went on to speak about what? After idolatry, I'm reading from the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse uh, 29. Then he mentioned witchcraft. You see, why is witchcraft? You see, you try to manipulate things. You get it? That is why the Bible calls it witchcraft, the work of the flesh, using your sense, opportunity. You are trying to play on people, to manipulate people. We had Jezebel was said to be her witch. You see, when we talk of Jezebel being a witch, is our mind. You want you want to have things that belongs to other. You know what it did. You know when we study about the uh, uh, the, the the Wikipedia. You know the life of of of, of Jezebel. Almost why he, he turned out to be a witch. Not that Jezebel is flying the night, but she's using her evil senses. You know he wanted to bring idolatry to Israel. So what did he do? He married a king. Of an Israeli. So what did he do? What did she do? She now decided, okay, this king, how do I what? How do I introduce idols that this man will not agree? This man is a Christian. But one thing is she studied the weakness of the man that men love to marry what? They love to marry different what? They would love to marry many women. So what uh, Jesus did in his days was that he start to bring many girls, young young girls, to the husband to marry. It. You understand? You will see small girl virgins. You bring it to him at the husband. You say, please, I want you to have many children, so that what you will have abundant, so that the whole Israel, even to villages, each each villages, your son will be there to be the chief, the head of each each village, so that anywhere they look on the left. They look on the right, it should be you, so that your tenacity will do what? Will remain forever. So the thing pleased the man. You see, this is how he manipulated the husband. So the husband was so happy. You know, how can a woman, you know, women normally they are jealous and envious, you know, of other women. Of the women, but this is the woman who will go and bring all that woman. You know, my husband, I give this one as a birthday gift, virgin, married. You know, even she will pay the dowry. So the man was so impressed. But what happened then after the man married, they had many children, he had 70 sons. You get it, of which Jezebel just had about three sons for this man, other 70 is born by. Different white protein by Jezebel. So at the end, Jezebel needed what? Something in return. And what was that? He needed to introduce idolatry. So when he had done when she had done that, then step by step he started introducing idol. He built I house of idol here, built there, built there, then he started to remove the priest of God. That they should leave that temple, that that temple had been converted to war for Baal, Baal temple. You see, this is what she did. She manipulated, you know, maneuvering. You see, this is witchcraft. So when she managed to do that, what happened? Then the man also allowed her. Despite the man knew 
the Jehovah, the God of Israel, does not need other other idol. But the wife has had given him what is pleasing to him. So that is why the wife not did that. So he did so many things. In the Bible, when we go to the Bible, we see all these kings, the book of first kings. We see most of these things. He, Elijah was living in his days. So that is why he had a lot of clashes with prophet Elijah. You know, because this your wife is, is, a, is a witch, you understand, manipulating you. So he did many things to the extent that they decide to build a, a very big school. They call it the King's College. Only the king children would be attending the schools. You know, it was still the idea of what? Of Jezebel. He suggested it to the husband. The husband was so pleased. So that this school, only the king's children, they would teach them how to be ruling. They would start from baby to teach them about kingship. So that is why we have King's College in the UK and many parts of the world today. This idea came from Jezebel. You see, he said they should need a king's school. So the man was happy. Only your your blood. Then they, they needed the land. Then it was Jezebel. There was a land of a man who near the house. They said they should take the land from that man. They should buy it so that they make it kids call it. But what happened? God had in the man, the owner of the land that was neighbor. God had in his heart that no, he says he's not selling the land because this land is a land of inheritance. As his own father gave him, his forefather gave him, gave it to his father, passed it to his father. His own father passed it to him. So also he too will pass it to his children. So what happened? They told Jezebel, the husband went to meet Nabot, who owns this land. He said, please give me, I'll give you top of the money, or I'll give you a better land in the capital city. You know, the man said, no, I love this land. Just leave it like that. You know, I'm not selling. Then he became annoyed, became dejected. Then he went to him. You know, on getting home, Jezebel said, what were you doing? What happened? Why are you sad? He said, because Nabal refused to want to set that land for that your program of the King's College that we want to build. Then he said, okay, you're a stupid man. He said, today you start to rule. Bring, let me teach you how to do it. Then he took the pen of Ahab. Then he wrote a letter. She wrote a letter. What I said, that please, let us invite what? Let us, let us do what we call it a holy day, that they want to do fasting and prayer, that they should organize it. They organize bad boys who pretend to be Christian, that they want to do a prayer that they invited one. Nabot to lead them in prayer for that occasion. Then Nabot came to the occasion, you know, because Nabot heard that they want to do praying to the name of the Lord. So they invite him to lead the, the meeting, the, the, the prayer, the worship, the sacrifice. Then Nabot, who owns that land came from but at the park, he has said that he has hired some, some bad people that when they see Nabot, they should kill Nabot. You understand? How do they know that they should they should accuse Nabot that Nabot spoke against the Lord? So that if they have two or three witnesses according to all, to the law of God, that nobody should blaspheme the name of God. You see, that was the lies. Jezebel it be purported against what? against Nabot because they want to take over the land manipulations. So that is what Jezebel did. So Jezebel now organized the the prayer section that they want to do some three day praying and fasting to God that they invited what? This person, Nabot. So when they came, so the bad people, you know, people who like to take money. When you give them money, they are ready to lie against you. So these are the people that what Jezebel did what? He gave them money that they should talk that. Nabot, speak against God. If you, you, you talk that, I will give you more. Then those people now, when they were doing the prayer, then they just stood up. They said, this man spoke against God. He heard it. Because that the, the system that time, they need only three witnesses. Even the three witnesses came out. Then they said, okay, what is the law now? When they brought it to them, they said, then they need to kill them. Because if you if you speak against the name of the Lord, then they stoned this man to death. Immediately they stoned the man to death. Then Jesus called the husband and said, see, go and take over the land. Because the man who owns is dead. Then the man was having children. You see, so when they know that the man is having children, they call the children, they kill all of them. 
all the children showed that they will not be able to reveal. It was Jehu, the chief of Amistad, who said it. He said it was there when they were killing all the children of Mabot. You see, so God is going to avenge this sin upon Jezebel. So this is what we call witchcraft. So some of us are like that today. We like to manipulate people. You see them, they come to the church. You see it. The system, they met it there. They see the pastor, the assistant pastor, the deacons, everything. You that just came, you want to enter the church and take over the position of assistant pastor. Then you start to manipulate people. Start to like this is what you call witchcraft. You see, you don't need to fly. fly. You know when you are manipulating people to take things that does not belong to you. That is what the Bible calls witchcraft. This is a mind, the mind of Jezebel. That is what Jezebel was doing. That's why when you say a witchcraft in the Bible, it means that person is manipulating people. You get it? Things that does not belong to you, you use falsehood and lies. You lie against people. You buy gifts to, bri to blind people so that what you have your way. This is the spirit of witchcraft. It's a thing of the flesh. It's a thing that comes out of the mind. You see, you are not qualified to be in that position. You know, you go and look for money. You bribe people who are in that authority to take over that position so that they will consider. So what you are doing, you are a witch. You are a witch. So this is the mind of the flesh the mind we bring from the world so when we come to jesus we don't need this mind that is why the bible says jezebel was a way it's our nature you see everything she did you know what he, he, he manipulated the husband that the holy spirit start to worship by without the husband knowing so when god wants to evil deal with the husband he say he has not seen any evil person like here whom the wife manipulated against god you know the master gave himself he was he was possessed by jezebel you see when jezebel was to be killed also he said the same thing god gave a command to jehu you know the chief of army star the rebel again when they saw that the 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 the, the, the their commander that's the king ahab is dead you know they they now then god told him that he need to avenge one killed Jezebel. Oh, you know, when he got to the place with the rebellion army to kill Jezebel, you know, Jezebel looked from, from upstairs. When they, they told Jezebel, say, Oh, there's rebellion. People are no more standing with you people. Your span is dead. All the chief of armies have rebelled. They've come with army. Things like that. What did Jezebel do? She went inside. He went to put on lipstick, put on eyelashes, put on what we call it, uh, lead. You know, to look sexy, you know, put on powder. Then she came out, put on wigs, because wigs is not today, just to look younger and beautiful, to so appear before what? Before Jehu, then she, she peeps, say, oh, Jehu, how are you? You see, then Jehu said, throw her down. He told the men beside her, that bodyguard, that if you are for the law, throw her down, because there's no manipulation war against the Lord. You see, there's no cancer against the law. So that is why we are telling people, all these things, we have to drop it. It will not work in the Christianity. You are just wasting your time. Because these things, God has delivered the church from it. So that is why the Bible is saying in this place, that is witchcraft, manipulating people. You see, that's why the Bible call it, it's the work of the flesh, hatred. You hate people, you know, variance. You only want your home to be different. Variance. You see it? When they bring one chair for you, you don't want to sit at the same plastic chair. So they have to look for another coaching chair so that they will put you there so that you'll be more than others. That's variance. When everybody wear green, 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 you want to wear red cloth. You know, when everybody wear something that is, you just want to be different. That is the work of the flesh. You see, when they come to the church, you don't want to be the member. You want to be the air. You want to be above everybody. You see, that is the work of variance. Then we we'll talk of what? Emulations. Copy, copy. You don't have your own direction. Your eyes will just be looking up and down. What do you want to steal and copy from people? Because you don't want to, do, to, to put your own seed of idea. Because you know it will take time before I plant this idea. I start to find the idea before the idea come up. Why did me copy this man and steal this idea and take it over by force? You understand? So this is the work of the flesh. Then he went on to speak about what? 
about rot. Annoyance. You're always feeling big. Nobody can talk to you. Any sport you become annoyed because you're highly high minded. Strive, fighting everybody. You can't stay in a place. You must see difference to fight people. You must see faults. You know, fault finder. Your high is purer than anybody. You must see the fault on every person. There were seditions. When you talk sedition, it's a political war. Like a rebel. You are in a group now. They form meeting now. Let's be doing things together. You want to go against the authority. That person supposed not to be there. You know, you scatter the meeting. Why? Because you want to be the head. You know, if they don't make you the head in that place, no, nothing will work. So this is what we call rebellion. Seditions. They do it everywhere in the society. In our country. That's why we're here. You know, we cannot organize ourselves. Let us do this thing together and humbly as that we are equal. No, you want to be above everybody. If they don't make you the head, the thing will not work. You will, you will, you, the, the team must end. You know, sedition, heresies, you know, speaking things that is not godly. You have people now, they talk vanities. You know, that is what we call heresies. Then we have envyings. Envyings, we know most of these things. You know, you don't trust yourself. Other people, they don't progress near you. Then your heart become what? Well. Peter, when you see progress, envy. You wish that thing were yours. Since it's not yours, that thing should be destroyed. That thing should not progress. This is envy. Murders, killing of people. You know, you will use strong to kill them. You speak against them. Drunkenness. Your own. Not to only drink small drink. You make it, you are looking for something that will influence you so that you will be committing evil until you drink, drink, drink and you become drunk. So that what? You go out of control. You see it? Then it went on to so rebellious. Any of your thing is enjoyment. Does enjoyment come out of that thing? If enjoyment does not come, you are not interested. Rebellious. You know? Happy, you want, you want to be in happy hour every moment. There's no sober life in your life. You know, party, go to party here, go to party there. Where that is sweetness, that is where you want to see you. Anything that is not sweet, anything that is low, anything that is not profiting, you are not interested. That is what we call rebellions. And it's also like what I tell you before. And I also told you in time past. That they will do certain shall not inherit the kingdom of, of God. That is what Paul is saying. So what we are saying that there is a need for us to renew what? Have a mind. You will wonder, are these people not born again? Really, they are born again. They believe in the Lord Jesus. But the problem is that they have not what? They have not changed their mind. And when they don't change their mind to renew it, to change their mind from that of the evil one to that of God, it will be very, very difficult for such people to do what? To, to be able to progress in the things of God. You know, when we talk of our behavior as a Christian, the mind of Christ, it's a fragrance. You know, when people see the way you are behaving, you know, people want to come to Jesus because it's a sweet smell. Paul was speaking about it. You know, he's talking of a, 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 a acceptable sacrifice, a good fragrance. It's our behavior. You know, not our behavior saved us, but it brings people to Jesus. But if you have a type that you refuse to change your mind, you still carry the mind you had when you are an unbeliever, you brought it to Christianity. Then the Christianity will not work. So that is what Paul was speaking in the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 1. He said, Now I say that the head, as long as it's a child, different nothing from a servant, though it be Lord of all. But it's under tutors and governor until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the element of this world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth a son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem they that are under the law, that we may receive the adoption of son. And because you are son, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying about father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, 
then an heir of God through what? Through Christ. How be then, when you knew not God, you did serve unto them, which by nature are not God. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and better the element where unto you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I bestow upon you labor what? In the brethren, I beseech you, be as I have for I'm as you are. You are I have not injured me at all. You know how through infirmity of the flesh I pray the gospel unto you at first. So what was Paul was speaking here, you know, it's just like the Romans in the days. You will have the noble Romans. What they normally do when they have a child, they normally have steward. You know, mostly steward are servants, old servants who have stayed with them. They've loved the servant. The servant had been integrated into their family. So when they integrate the servant into their family, then he looks like a member of the family. So when they now have a child, mostly those who have children, the, the noble one, you know, they will entrust this steward to this child. He will be the one to take care of this child from baby, to have to, to bring him to the knowledge, you understand, of of what the father wants so that we'll be able to inherit what the things that belong to all to the father you know which because the heir apparent he will be the one to inherit so this is what paul was writing here so he was saying that the same thing we are you see when we come to jesus christ we are just like Ephraim. we don't know anything we need to be taught many things that is why we have Bible studies. Why? Why we have teaching places? That's why we have Bible being simplified, so that we need to learn about Jesus. So that all those things we have learned of the devil, we dump it away. But in fact, what we do today, most people they don't want to learn of Christ. When they come to Jesus, what they do, they just they, they just want to come and pick something from Jesus and go away. You know, they have turned. These things of God to lascivious them that this is an opportunity to make a career. This is an opportunity to make money. So they don't want to practice what Jesus said. What we should do. So that is why Paul was speaking that we need to walk in that book of Galatians chapter four verse one. He says, "You know, as long now I say that the heir, as long as a child, you see, he is so as long you refuse to grow, as long you refuse to." To build yourself with the word of God. There's no difference between you and unbeliever. Where you are coming from. Because where we are coming from, you are living like that. So, but why Jesus saved us is that he wants to change the way of our thinking. The way of our doing things. But you see, uh, uh, in our society today, people, they are still following the way they were thinking. So it makes the Christianity not to work. Why? Because the mind we brought to Jesus was the mind of cheating, the one mind of making money, the mind of making something quickly. But God's way is different. So that is why we needed to work. We need to learn about what? About the way of Christ. That is why we have to put on Christ. You know, the mind of Christ. What was the mind of Christ? The mind of humility. We read that in the book of Philippians. Let's see this mind which was what? In Christ Jesus. I want us to read the book of Philippians 2 15. Let me read from my Bible so that we see what Paul was really meaning. That is, we need to change our mind, the way we think, because that has been the problem that we have in Christianity today. People are not changing their mind. He says, If therefore, I'm reading from Philippians 2 1. Be any consolation, crave any comfort, or if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercy, for fear my joy that you be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let not it be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other than themselves. You see, in Christianity, we have to esteem other, not yourself. You know, but what we see today, people want to exalt themselves because of the gift they have. You know, Everybody has a gift. You see it. There was I was my I was able to see a church sometime ago in this society. The man who formed the church was an uneducated man. You know, he could not 
read the Bible, dissected very well. But Dima has his own gift. You know, he's so gentle, he could speak to the people. So one by one, on one on one, he converted the people. He speak to them to come to God. Let us be praying together. It was an humble man. Let me put it like that. Then people, they followed him. But later on, they discovered this man doesn't know how to dissect the Bible. So, but what God did, he brought another brother who is highly educated, who knows the Bible, who could decide the Bible, who knows the mind of God in the Bible. Then this one came to the group. So when he came to the group, they started. The pastor was happy. But later on, when the pastor now saw the way this guy deciding the Bible, he started to be envious of him. You see, the work of the flesh came in. That, oh, ah, why would this guy know more than him? And also the brother, because he knows, he starts to look down on the pastor, that the pastor should not preach again, that the uh, Holy Spirit, he doesn't know anything, he's an illiterate, that this is the, he will be the head, then the pastor should be the second, you know, things like that. But what do we see? They fought and left the church. You see, so this is the issue. You understand? We have to put the mind of Christ. Not be high-minded. Any gift you are given is for a purpose. You see, at the end, the old pastor lose. The new pastor too. He loses. Why? Because they did not what? They did not humble themselves. So that is why Paul is saying, Lord, every man should not look every man unto his own gift. Don't say my own gift is better than others. Just like we have the body, we have the eye. I cannot say the work is performing is better than nose. You see, because without bread, I will die. Neither with no sir, because he's breathing, eyes is not doing any work. Without work, without eyes, even some function of the nose will not be possible. So we need one another. So that is why we have to know this mind, the mind of Christ. Because we don't have the mind of Christ, that is why things is not working. Envy. We envy one another. When God gives somebody into our society, despite the black race, you see, you see some people go bring them as a gift. Everybody will hate that person. Why? Because why would this black man has this gift? But if it's all that race, white race, all the black will go and worship him. They say this person, mm, he knows about this thing very well. But God gave them to the black people. But they don't regard him because of envy, because they brought the mind of envy into Christianity. Everybody is looking and saying, how will I bow down for this person? How will I serve this person? How will I obey this person? So this is the mind that does not make Christianity to work. So he was saying in verse 5, he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You see, who being in the form of God, taught it no robbery, to be equal with God. We have two God. We have the Father. We have the Son. You know, Jesus did not raise himself. Say, me I'm God. I cannot do this. You know, how can I bow down for you? But he humbled himself. That is what the Bible says. He humbled himself before the Father. He did not make himself he did not make himself equal you know so the same thing with us we have to humble ourselves at time when i see most of the problem we are having in this our afro society it's just question of pride people are highly minded people they value their own gift so much you value your gift so much Person who have been in that society have been doing that thing for long. You didn't recognize the grace that have kept him, that make people to be listening to you. you that came overnight. You want to take over everything because of your gift. You see, that is what Paul is saying. We need humility. Humility is the mind of Jesus. So we have to learn to be humble. You know, we have to learn to recognize others. You see, but what we do, we don't want to recognize others. Only ourselves. You see, so that is why he said, But Jesus made himself of no reputation. That is verse 7. And took upon him the form of what? Of a servant I was made in the likeness of man. You see, this is God. You know, it's a degrading situation for God to become flesh. But Jesus said, Okay, if it will make things to work, let me go. You see, verse 8 says, And being found fashion, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto them, even the death of the cross. Not that only in heaven, when he came to heart, he was born in the public. He did not say, Oh God, if I go to heart to die for people, make me king. 
so that I'll be born in the palace. I'll, born, I'll become Jesus Herod. Uh, I'll become a Rothschild. But he came from a poor home. He suffered many things, even in the flesh, before they even sacrificed him to the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So if you really need a name, because that is what we are fighting for, I'm more than you, I'm number one, I'm number one. If you need that name, it's by humbling yourself, bringing yourself down, you know. But when you are hiding yourself, God is going to bring you down, not even the devil. Because the Bible says, whosoever exalts himself is God who will bring him down. Because devil, you know, when you are exalting yourself, devil will even like it. He knows that you have nothing to do about God. You know, God will clear you from his side. So devil will encourage you. So it's not devil who is making you pray. I mean, you know, if God wants to punish, it's God who is punishing you. Punishing you when you are proud. It's God that abasing people. So that is why God made Jesus. Give him a name that is above every name. That is why we want. We believe in Jesus. So that is why we are talking about the mind. So in this mind, you see, when we say, oh, once I'm saved, I'm saved. It's not so. You understand? You can carry yourself away from what? From the Christianity. I want you to see one man in the book of uh, Acts chapter Acts chapter 8. You know, I've only talked about this man. But this man is a good example for us in our days so that what? We may understand this movement. I mean this Christian movement. Because some people think that, oh, it's not necessary. Since you have become born again, just to go to church and pray. It's not so. You understand? There is a need for us to change our way of thinking. There was this magician in Samaria. You see, he was doing magic. That is what all he knew how to do best. You know, he was screaming to be a great one. You see that story in the book of Acts chapter 8 from verse 1. It was claimed to be what? A great one. That he has the power of God. But this an unbeliever. He has not known the Lord. He has not known Jesus. Then there was another man, you know, who was preaching in that same world. You know, in that same land. That was, uh, let me see. Okay, that was uh, Philip. Philip was a disciple of Jesus. So he was preaching. He went to, to Samaria to preach. As he was preaching, then he met this magician who had been there before him. So many people are following because in the world, they like to exalt themselves. And this and that. And bigger than you. They like to give themselves a title. They like to promote one another. So, but in Christianity... It's the mind of humility. You have to humble yourself. So when this Philip was preaching, the preaching of humility, then God started to do miracles in that land. And people now saw the difference. Then they shift from this magician and followed Philip. So when the magician saw that, everybody followed Philip. He said, How, what will I do? You understand? He too became born again. Let me put it like that. He became converted. It's okay to believe on Jesus. If it's to believe on Jesus, we make people to follow. You see, that was the mind he was having. He has not changed his mind. So, he was following them. They were singing, worshipping, fellowship together. But it came to one day. You know, the people in Jerusalem, they know because Samaria is a place that Jezebel had lived and here. They have encouraged worshipping of idols. So, this place is not for idolatry. When you are looking for all form of voodooism to go to Samaria. But the people, when they hear the gospel, they start to abandon what? This idolatry life and follow the way of Christ. So this is, their chief magician was Simon. He too converted. Like, but he had a problem. He was still carrying the mind of magic. You know, the mind of voodoo. He was still carrying that along to Christianity. So he was going in out there. Then, then the people in Jerusalem, the disciples, the twelve disciples, they heard that, oh, there's a revival. God has visited Samaria. People have not given their life to Jesus. Okay, let us pay a visit to them and say hello and greet them and encourage them by the words of the Lord. So getting there, 
They did many things they prayed for, then the Holy Spirit came upon everybody who believed, except on who? Except on the magician. Simon was his name. He's an Israeli guy. You know, he did not fall on him. So then he now looks, okay, since by laying off us, you know, Holy Spirit is falling upon people. What did he do? They decide is decide to what? To go and meet Peter when he saw that. Peter was one of the chief apostles who came. Then what did he do? Then let's see in the book of, of uh, Acts 18, uh, chapter 8, verse 18. And when someone saw that, through laying on of the apostles' hand, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered the money. You see, the mind is carrying the mind of bribery and corruption. This is what we do today. When we go to church, we won't be buying pastor, buying shoe, buying clothes that they love the pastor so that the pastor will promote him from an uh, ordinary member may they make him assistant pastor dickiness you know this is what they are doing manipulation this is so we need to change this mind we need to humble ourselves you see so he gives them money that they should give him the holy spirit so that he not even giving him he will be the ownership so that anybody he lays hand upon He's saying, give me, that's Acts 8, 19, give me also this power, that whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. You want to be selling the Holy Spirit. You see the mind, this man has not changed, because the mind is real loss. You see, but Peter said unto him, thy money perish what? We did because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money, because this is the mind. Anything of God is money, you know? Some people said will be asking me, how many followers are is following me? Because their mind is the mind of the world. We are preaching here to teach the truth of the world. We are not after money. We are not after people should follow us because we are no person. We want people to follow Jesus so that when you hear the truth of the word of Jesus, that you may be saved. That is the purpose. So this is the mind that this Simon who is claiming to be a Christian carry to follow what? The apostles, he said, give me power. The apostles know that they don't have the power. They just need to believe on Jesus. You see, let's see what Peter said. He said, but Peter said unto him, that's uh, Acts 8.20, that money perish what? We did because they have thought that the gift of God may be purchased what? With money. You see, we don't buy the gift of God. God gives the gift as he wills. If you know you want to sell, it will not give you. You see, because it's not for sale. Verse 21, There has neither part nor lock in this matter, for thy art is not right in the sight of God. This is the mind. See, the mind is not right. You see, it's carrying a different mind to Christianity. This is what we do today. We brought different mind. The mind of voodoo. The mind of the flesh, carnality, wickedness. You see, we're in the church, we didn't change. The other time I was settling somebody, husband and wife, they are fighting. You see, we called the wife, see the way she's posting. We said, ah, I said, oh, he doesn't have time because she's going to church. I said, but this is what Jesus said, that if you have trouble with somebody, you know, I quoted the Bible for her. Matthew chapter 6, this is what Jesus said. Say, forget about the gift. Go and reconcile with the person you're having quarrel with. You know, the husband was with me. You know, when I called the woman, I said, oh, see, your wife is coming. Let's say to the issue, and I called the woman. The woman said, he doesn't have time. He's going to judge this and that. You know, then I said, but Jesus, I told the woman, but Jesus said, if you're having quarrel with somebody, reconcile first. He said, no, he said, that is the word of Jesus. He said, no, get time for that uh, word of Jesus. I was shocked. These are people in Christianity. Which church is she going? Witchcraft. So this is what we are saying. You understand? People, they have not changed their mind. The word of the Lord. Who are you going to pray to in the church? Or dance to in the church? Because most of these people is just to wear clothes, to showcase themselves. You know, they have not believed in the Lord. You see, so the husband said, okay. Since he have even had with all these things, say I should leave, leave her. You see, so we have to respect the word of the Lord. So that is what is saying here. Is it that has neither part, nor Lord, in this matter, 
because your heart is not right with God. So there is a need for us to put our heart. Our heart is very important. How do you worship without a heart? You see, if your heart is with the house of Dagon, the house of Satan, how can you put it in the house of God? It's impossible. If not, so you are a hypocrite. You are just pretending you are of God, but you are of the devil. So that is what they saying. Your heart is not right with God. So we have to place our heart to be right with God. Our thought. So what did Peter admonish this man? He said, repent thereof of this that wickedness. And pray perhaps if the thought of the heart may be forgiven thee. The thought of the heart. Our mind. Why? He said, For I perceive that thou art in the guard of bitterness and in bond of iniquity. You see, this is what Peter said. That is, your heart is not right with God. So we have to see all these things. That is what there is a need for us to change our attitude. You know, to change it. And how do we change it? By obeying the voice of God. You see, the children of Israel, they did the same thing. They did the same thing. When you see when God saved them from, from Egypt, you know, God carried them, you know, as uh, as this animal, they carried they carry their child. And when you see dog now, carry the child, or this bed, they carry their children. You see, they carry, that's how God carried them. That's how he carried Israel. So, but when they go to the to the to the desert, they go down so the behavior of these people. You see, they don't believe the Lord. Anything God says, they are not interested. They are carrying the mind of Egypt along with the Lord. They are proving the Lord can go help them. Despite all the miracles the Lord did in Egypt. You know, to their own eyes. They saw it, how God made a difference between them and the Egyptians. But what happened? They didn't believe the Lord. This is what people are doing today. They are just following Jesus. They don't believe in him. They still respect the idols. All the principle of idolatry culture. They respect it more than the word of God. And then the church. All is to dance and sing and wear their their shameful clothes, you see, to dance. But the words of God, they will not obey. They don't even believe the Lord. Let's see the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 1, I read from verse 20. I read from verse 18. Deuteronomy 1, 18. And I commanded you at that time, all things which you should do, and when we departed from Horeb. We went through all that great and terrible what? wilderness which you, which, which you saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites, as the Lord our God commanded us. And we came to what? Kadesh Benayah. And I said unto you, You have come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God do give unto us. Behold, the Lord our God has set the land before thee go up and possess it as the Lord God of thy father has said. Unto the fear not, neither be discouraged. And you came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search us out of the land, and bring us what again by the way that we must go up, and into which city we shall come. And the same place may well, and I two twelve men of you, one of a tribe, and they turned and went into the mountain, and came into the valley of Eshcol, and searched it, and they took of the fruit of the land in the ends, and brought it down unto us, and brought us what they can say, It is a good land which the Lord our God to eager. Notwithstanding, we will not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And you murmured in your tent and said, Because the Lord hated us, He has brought us out of the land of Egypt. To deliver us into the hand of the Amorite to destroy us. Whither shall we go? Our brain have destroyed our sin. The people is greater and taller than we. The city are greater and wall up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of Anna kings there. Then I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. 
and in the wilderness, what thou hast seen, how the Lord thy God that bore thee, as a man do walk, bear his son in his hand, that you went until you came into this place. Yet in this time, you did not believe the Lord your God, who went in the way before you to search out a place to pitch your tent, your tent in, in fire by night to show you by what way you shall go, and in the cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words, and was wrought, and so said, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land which I swear to give unto the Father, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh, he shall say, Unto him will I give the land, that he shall trodden upon it, and his children, because he has only followed what? The Lord. You see, so this is what Moses was giving at camp. He said, And the Lord was also angry with me. For your sake, sin, thou shalt not go into the land either. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in either and encourage him, because he shall cause the children of Israel to walk, to inherit the land. You see, what we are saying, when you are not following person with a true heart, you see, that is what the children of Israel did. And this is what we bring to Christianity. We are still carrying the mind of, of our own believing state. We brought it. We even make it the law. We sit on it in the church. You see, that is what they did. You know, God did wonders in the land of Egypt. Then they followed Moses. What day was their mind? Let us see if God will be able to help them. So they got to the desert. They were, they were in need of water. Instead of them to ask God, they only come with an accusation. Say, why did you bring us here? There is no water out. Then we will die now. You see, this is not the way of asking. Because they are having the mind to fight. You see, they were fighting. Then Moses will now talk to God. God will say, okay, no problem. This is what I'm going to do. You know, tell them that I, I, I time me, we say, take plant, put it there, that the water will be sweet. But there's no one of them will say, God, thank you for this water. This water was bitter, it's become sweet. No. The next thing, what they don't have, just to complain every day, because they have carried the mind of fights from Egypt. This is what we do today. We carry mind of fights, follow everything. All black people fight. Before we start the meeting, fight said they, it's in your mind. How will I bring this person down? If they make this person chairman, I will be the one to remove the chair. You see, this is what we do. These are the evil mind. That does not want make us to progress. Let's see the book of James chapter 3. What does it say? The book of James chapter 3. I read from verse 13. Who is a wise man and endure with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his work with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter words, envying and strife in your heart, glory not. And lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. When you say, when you are having envy against people, you are having quarrel in your heart, people will not tell you. They just be following you. You understand? With an evil heart. You see? So that is what he's saying. He said, don't glow. This is not from God. He said, this wisdom is not from above, but is earthly. It's of the earth. It's of sensual. When it's sensual, you hear me? Of the sense. You are just using your senses. You know, in eyes of the devil. He said, we are envy and strivers. There's confusion and every evil world. But the wisdom that is from our boys for pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. This is the spirit of Christ. You see people, when you are fighting as Christian, they will say, no, you will not agree, you will not, you will not forgive. Why? Because that thing, if you see that thing that he did, you know, if God come from heaven, said, no, our God will not like it. But you are a Christian. What did Jesus say? Just as Christ forgave us, we should forgive others. So, that why we offend them. Forgive your wife. You will not hear. You know? He will deal with the wife. Why? Because maybe he's the one who is having the financial income for the for the family. He will not punish the wife, punish the wife. You see, the same thing with women, especially in developed nation. Oh, the husband did this. 
He used them when they came. Because now you have power. You have house. You have money. You know, they will not forgive. You know, they, you will speak the word of Christ to them. Not easily entreated. You see, the word of Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. You see, why? Because they are not in position. The Bible says, this is not the wisdom from above. It's of the devil. It's of the senses. Because you have. The day you don't have now, you will not humble yourself. So that is why we are employing people. We need to put on Jesus, the word of God. Let the word of God be the final. You know, that is humility. Oh, why? Because Jesus said, I should do this thing. Humble yourself. Because you don't hold your life. Your life now belong to Jesus. So that is why the children of Israel, as we are saying in the book of Deuteronomy, what did they do? They start to follow Moses with envy. Why should this one be the leader? You know, they are following Moses. Anything Moses did, they were quick instead. Even when Moses went to Monte to, to pray to God, you see, they said, no, this Moses, maybe he had died because they are even wishing him dead. No, he's on a mom. We didn't hear from him. They asked Aaron. Aaron said, no, we're all here. They are Hur. Yeah, Hur was the husband of uh, Miriam, the sister of Aaron. At that one, they, they asked Hur. They said, no, Hur was telling them, be patient. They, they even killed Hur. Say said, we will be one to, to control the kill. Hur. So Aaron was afraid. They said, make us another idol, you know. They choose a captive, they want to return back to Egypt, not to go to the promised land. You see, because of envy, this is what we do today. Instead of many gifts God has given us, that let's use this gift together, we scatter them. Then we become slaves to other foreigners, you know, to other power. Other people say, who has no power? When you see Africa, we are under all this all the little, little Asia country as slaves. You understand? Even our army. In Africa, they are being trained by all the Southern Asia. You see, at the time when I hear, you say, she, so we can't train ourselves. You understand? We can't do things on our own until we hear back in India. You understand? You know, we became so low because well, we don't we don't respect one another. So we have to see all these things so that what well, we may do what well, we may give our life to all well, to the word of God. Because when we have all these things, so the children of Israel, what happened? They don't even believe the word of God. God said he will carry them to a land flowing with milk and honey. They said, no. They told Moses, say, look, we are not sure. Maybe this land of milk and honey is not true. That is what Moses wrote this account for us. You know, we see in number when they say God commanded that they should send 12 tribes to go and see the land. If the land is flowing with milk and honey, God will not do that. God is God. is the creator of everything. But Moses, they wrote that because this is what the people wanted. You see, when God said they should go to the land, God did not need to send a spy because he's seen everywhere. God knows everywhere. You see, so the people came to Moses. Moses said, you are the people. You know, people, Moses want them to move along because Moses knows that God has a good intention. Our God is a good God. He wants them to follow God, but these people are not willing. It was the makers. He humbled himself. They said, God said they should move. They said they are not moving. Who see this at time? In the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter 3, when God said, you have stayed so long in this valley, move forward. They don't want to go. Then they said, no, we need to send a spy to spy the land. If the land is flowing with me, because that's what God said. It's not important. We do the same today. Anything God said, we don't want. You know, what our heart, our meeting, our culture says is very important. You see, it's very important. Somebody was, he saw, they, they married in Europe, you understand. So, when they fought, they were in our church. You see, when they fought, they were having quarrels. So, we want to solve it. And the, the woman said, no, say na home, say na, na, na home. His home will determine how he will live with the husband. The husband to here, he said, no, he said, you know, they are from so-so tribe. Their culture is more important than the gospel. You know, say, church cannot say to this, you know, what is so? Then I asked a question. Is it your father or your mother who gave you this girl? Or the lady, is it the, your own parents who gave you the man? He said, no, where did you people meet? He said, they met here. They love each other. That's why they talk to each other. And they accepted what? One another. So that is what he said. I said, okay, since you people met each other here, then 
you now inform your parents that what you want to go after this what uh, this relationship so and this relationship is having problem now so why is it those people controlling he said that's how they want it you see they don't want the church you see it they don't want the church why because they are still in the world where they are coming from they value it but where they are going so this is what the children of israel did they said no we want to send people to go and see the lamb if it's rich or poor to see the people there then moses look 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 this okay if, if this is what you want that will make you to move forward okay see we're going to talk to the lord then he went to the lord you know moses was pleading on behalf of people god this is what because Moses knew that this is a wrong thing because they didn't believe in the Lord. You know, he said, God, please, you allow them. I go, okay. If you want that Moses, you can tell them, I will follow them. Then the twelve spies they went. So God was following them with his glory. So they got to the land. The intelligent spies, they start to look. You know, they go to a place, they cook saw a big fruit of uh, grapes they cut it okay to show the people say the land is very rich okay seems like god is talking truth about this one okay it's now we believe we saw it with her this is what we do eh? we don't believe our god by faith is there anything goes so i better forget it don't happen for your eyes before so this is things that will a, a wrong mind we put this wrong mind to christianity so that is what they did on getting to the place they cut the fruit and they start to look. Then they came back. Uh, when they saw the fruit, people were rejoicing. The fruit. Then they said, no. The people in the land, they are big people. They use high power. Start to increase it. See, the people, they are they tall rich heaven. We even see what? The wall of their houses. They say, tall rich heaven defense. When we are going, we cannot take over. We can't jump the fence. How did they enter the place? You see, it. they start to discourage people because from the moment, they don't want to go to that not Moses who will lead them to that place what they have they should return back to Egypt and say for you sorry we have been rude to you we have come back as slave and servant this is what we African people are doing that's why we became the least of all nations why because all the gifts all the gifts is there in music world we are the one who own music but what will happen the other race will come you copy the they give them the glory become the slave you see all the natural resources there why because envy we envy one another hatred you see since it's not you nobody should do it instead you will destroy it. let foreigner come and tie, take it out you will start to beg those foreigners to, to even give you food your own food you see this is what the children of israel did they said no let us choose another captain to carry your back to egypt because they envied Moses, you know. So anything Moses said, they don't want to hear. They stoned him many times. Despite all the living miracles that is happening in their presence. So Moses knew they said, okay. So they went, they came back. They said the house is tall to heaven. They even saw the two, uh, Anna, Anna and his children. Anna was a giant. You know, a giant seven. They said, they told each heaven, we cannot go. They start to cry, then God became annoyed. It was that time, say, all the people who knew Egypt, who grew up in Egypt, to uh, 20 years, about they will went and go kill all of them in the wilderness. So the same thing with us, you know, so that we're not there in the wilderness. So we have to change our mind to the mind of Jesus. You know, we should remove envy. Envy is the first war. Sitting yourself so high, that is the problem. You go to any place in a meeting, business, job pension, that thing that African is doing. What, what is it? It's just envy, pride. You know, you are better. You see yourself more handsome, more intelligent. That is you who know this thing. And this thing, you are not the person who started. Those who started, they don't know. They are foolish people. You know? I, I was seeing one person the other time. There's one man who had opened shop for almost 25 years. He had been sustaining that shop. Then one person just opened a shop three months. I went to greet him. I said, congratulations, you opened shop. He said, yeah. In the next town, our next town. I said, okay. I said, this thing you are selling is good. He said, yes. 
I say, I say, you see that shop too? I say, too, I've been functioning very well. He said, yes, that shop. He said, they don't know how to say. He's going to show them. This is you have just come. You know, you have not seen the rainy season, the winter, the sun, the winter, the summer. You see, you are posting. He said, those one doesn't know how to say. He's going to show them. He's going to do it. That they even, they are going to park. You see, high-mindedness. You see, the sin of Sodom. So these are the things. Envy. He had envy them. You know, the next they said they are going to park because you came. You know? So we have to see all this in the mind of Jesus. If not so, we will not be able to do what? To follow the ways of the Lord. Because not the absolute salvation. Some people are saying, well, you are saved. You don't need anything. You'll be saved forever. No, you can lose your salvation. Because most of these children of Israel, they were saved, but God destroyed them in the wilderness. Why? Because they did not change that their mind. The mind they had in Egypt. So that is the purpose of today's world. Today's teaching. So that we may change our mind to the mind of what? Of Christ. That we may love the Lord with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our spirit. You know, because the Lord God, the Bible says, changeth not. As it was in the beginning, so it is. The Bible says, and forever it will, it will always be the same. So that is why I want to finally read about Second Timothy chapter 4, 4 verse 10. Let's see what, what Paul was saying there. Verse, verse 10, 2 Timothy 4, 10. He said, For them as had forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Christian to Galatia, Tissot to Damascus. You see, only Luke is with me. You see, take back and bring him with thee for his privilege to me, to the ministry. This is Demas. These are people who started Christianity. But these people, Demas, he loved this word. You see, he changed his mind. So that is why if we did not change our mind to the mind of Christ, what will happen is that what? We'll lose our faith because we will not be able to, to show the glory of God, you know, to people. You know, we'll be, we, we become something hating even before God. Why? Because we did not give our heart to the Lord. I want us to see the book of Matthew chapter 19 verse uh, verse 15. Jesus was still speaking about this man, our Savior himself. He said, and he said, and behold, I'm coming verse uh, He said things that what? That defy the he said, things that defy man. You see, things that make us not to what? Not to be clean before God. So, things that defile us is all these things. He spoke about it. Well, go to that verse. He said, evil thoughts. This evil thought, it comes from the heart. You know, why do we think evil? Because we don't have the word of God with us. You know, so the flesh will always think evil. Theft. To steal other people's things. Because you don't believe God can help you. Murders. You know, because that person has that thing. Let me take it by force and kill him. So that he will not leave to report me to the judge. Adultery and fornication. You see, these are the things that come from their theft. False witness, blasphemy. All these things are things that will, that defile a man. So we need to change our mind. We need to renew our mind. We need to to understand these things. That is when you come to Christ, there are things that we do in Christianity. There are things we don't do in Christianity. So this is the mind we have got to taught to, to teach today. So that we may put on the mind of humility, humbleness. Not envy one another. Not jealous of people. That we may love one another. We may humble ourselves. You know, as by we black, we are so proud. We are the one who is black, we are so proud. We are the one who don't have, we are so proud. 
these things have eaten all the goodness that's supposed to come to us. He has eaten unity. We don't have unity. Why? Because one person belief is better than the others. You know, there is no way we are not finding peace. We are not finding unity of the group. You want to to lay hold. You want to be above everybody. So we have to know all these things so that we put on the mind of Christ. So with this mind, we'll be able to we'll be able to to show the glory of God. This is what the disciples they did in the time of old. You know, they gave their life in humility to the society so the bible says they were first called christian in Antioch, acts chapter 12 verse 3 they called them christians there because these people they were behaving like jesus but what would people say to of you to the way christian but you are behaving like satan you understand all your christianity we know is when you start to talk uh, when they ask you to preach or exhort, that is when we see Christianity in you. But in your character, in your private, in your business, in your in your interaction with people outside the building of church, you see, we see devil. We don't see Christ in you. So that is why there is a need for renewal of mind. We need to renew our thought, our thinking there. We should not put all those thoughts of the world again. You know, that you want to lord over people. You want to be the boss. You know, Christ is the boss. We are the servant of the Most High. So may God help us. Please, want you to like the video share it and some of this scripture i want you to go personally we are much more about war you receiving the word not even sharing not even uh, a liking or whatsoever that what you may change we want you to feel the living god because god is a living god we want us to feel his touch so that is why we talk about the mind of christ we should put on the mind of jesus so may god help us in jesus name